Hello and welcome. My name is Mio, I'm a medical doctor and a 3D artist. So a couple hours ago, Polif Jord on his Instagram posted this problem. Let's have a look. I am working on a rig thing and I'm looking at this wheel. Pay attention to this wheel. Now when I'm moving this, it's rotating, right? But I don't know if it should rotate this way. Let's call this A. And then this one is called B. Now it's rotating the other way. See that? Does this feel more correct? Feel free to vote in the poll and I'm just... <laughs> or you can also DM me and just tell me the truth. I don't know. I need help. <laughs> Please. Before we begin solving it, give it a go and write down your answers with your reasoning down below. Let's make it sort of a competition, shall we? Great, so let's solve this. I have this mechanism similar to the one shown there already. I've rigged it similarly with inverse kinematics so we can safely replicate the problem on this. I've made the wheel a little larger so that we can see easily the rotation. Let's see how we should go about this. Our problem is to figure out the rotation of the wheel. Since the string is fed from the underside of the wheel, if the wheel were to rotate clockwise, the string would lengthen as it would be an unwinding action. If the wheel were to rotate counterclockwise, it would take up the string and the string would shorten. And so deriving from this, if we figure out whether the string is becoming longer or shorter, we can figure out the direction of the rotation. Right, let's make a setup to visually demonstrate the length of the string as it correlates live to the movement of the mechanical leg. Conveniently, the string is a beveled curve. So we'll use that to our advantage. Let's bring a plane and scale it down. Let's add an array modifier and choose the type to fit the curve. We'll select the string curve as the source. Now since this array is fed in by the length of the string curve, it will change dynamically to the length. For visual ease, let's give it a green color. Perfect. Now we have a diagnostic tool to monitor the changes in the curve length in real time. Let's put it to work. We see that when we move the rig to a more flexed position, that is when the joints come in closer together, the bar lengthens, which means the string has become larger. Conversely, if we move the control bone to a more relaxed extended position where the joints are further far apart from each other, the length shortens. This means while moving in a flexed position, the string is drawn out from the wheel because it's lengthening. And so that means the movement of the wheel should be in a clockwise fashion. Team A, congratulations. However, it does not end here. Let's take it a step further. We have been moving our control bone in one plane to and fro. But walking does not happen to and fro. The shape of the path of the individual limb is not linear, but almost circular. So with this new movement, we can see that our bar slowly moves up, gains peak, and then starts to recede again. This cyclic motion of the wheel is the true representative of how the wheel should react during the walk cycle. Let's turn on the transform constraint on the wheel and bring all of this together. There we go, the Polyfjord 3D paradox. Hope this was helpful, like and subscribe if you want and I will see you soon. Farewell.